Bezal, myself, Council Dina Talley, Council Donnelly, Councilor Krush Merrick, and also present this evening, Councilors Tran, Boschman, Green, Clark, and Caddy. Uh, we will start with 161.17, an order that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the various revolving funds authorized by City Ordinance up to the amount available in the fund or $100,000, whichever is less. If I may speak to that, um, at the last meeting, uh, the Council approved an, uh, an ordinance, final printing, to create the revolving funds. <coughs> Excuse me. And this order is to authorize the spending for the coming fiscal year. And it's similar to what has been um, authorized in the past. Motion to approve 161.17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 161.17. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. 162.17, an order that there be and hereby is appropriated the sum of $37,000 send recharge against available funds and credited to information technology tech software for the purpose of upgrading Microsoft Exchange from 20, 2007 to 2016. Mr. Bonilla. Hi. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. So, um, yeah, this is an appropriation or a request for appropriation for uh, an upgrade for Exchange Server. It's a pretty big move. We're going to need a little bit of consulting help with this process because I'll just give you the quick details without, you know, getting too uh, boring here. But we, we have to spin up another virtual server, rebuild the Exchange server onto that server, and then copy our data over, and then do it a second time. It's, we've had this Exchange server for so long. I thought it was a good time to attack this project. Um, this would be the cost. We could actually stop halfway through if that funding, we would buy the 2016 license, but stop at 2013. We could do that if that was something you guys would prefer, but I would love to just go all the way to 16 and be up to date. And I have paperwork here if you guys would like to see it. I apologize, I didn't get it to you earlier. President Kushmer. Uh Mr. Benia, are there any uh, additional uh, recurring costs? Is it uh, more expensive maintenance fees moving forward or licensing fees? Uh, exactly the same licensing fees. And we would be bringing the police department finally onto our exchange server, getting them off that old uh, email server. So that's another big plus. Excellent, thank you. Motion to approve 162.17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 162.17. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? It is unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. One sixty three seventeen. in order that there be and hereby is appropriated the sum of $44,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to fire capital expenditures department equipment for the purpose of replacing the SCBA compressor. Chief Roy. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, Councilors, this is another one of our kind of long-standing uh, capital improvements that we've needed. Um, our compressor is our SCBA compressor that fills all our air tanks that we wear in our back at all fires and hazardous materials incidents. Uh, they also fill our scuba tanks. Uh, we also uh, help outside communities that uh, come in to get theirs filled. Uh, this compressor that we've got was uh, purchased in 1989. We moved it from 28 Oliver to 33 North. Uh, it no longer can fill our high pressure uh, bottles on our backs. We, we used to uh, have 3,000 PSI tanks. We've gone to 4,500. And um, we have tanks on the side, the aerial ladders that uh, fill the, t the tank up to 5,000 PSI. Um, this compressor no longer can do that. And to, and to fill scuba diving tanks, we cannot do it in the compressor, which is the safe way to do it. We have to do it on the ground with a hose, uh, which is not safe for our people if, if the, anything fails. Uh, there's cause for injury. Uh, so um, the other thing, we've been spending about $4,000 a year in repairs, uh, just the age of the, of the uh, compressor, getting parts, getting repair uh, pieces. So we had to downgrade it so we can't get the high pressures we used to out of it because of the piping and the, the hosing and the tanks on the system. So this would replace the entire system and would be good to go hopefully for another 28 years. Council Bezo. Uh, no, I just want to say that um, I love the list of stuff that we're voting on tonight. It's good to see that we're upgrading some of the equipment that we have because I know that's always one of the things we talk about is, you know, capital expenditures and, you know, repairing equipment, upgrading systems. So, I mean, it's good to see some of this stuff come forward and uh, 
making sure that we're doing this with the cash that we have available. So, Counsel, I agree, and the mayor's been good about getting us these things that we've been, been sitting for a while, and also we went before the Capital Improvements Commission, and they've been very good with their work on sorting these things out and what should be done. Motion to approve 163.17. Second. Motion made and approved to accept 163.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Councilors. 164.17. That there being hereby is appropriated the sum of $200,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to Department of <coughs> Public Works Capital Street Repair for the purpose of repairing and repaving city streets. Commissioner Laxo. Thank you. Uh, as you all know, we rely almost totally on uh, State Chapter 90 funds to pave our streets, which amounts to about $1.1 .1 million each year. We also, uh, from time to time to time, get contributions from uh, UNITIL if they're uh, working in a street and also from uh, wastewater and the sewer separation projects we've been paving those streets curb to curb after the uh, work is done but um, using those funds we're lucky if we can pave about three miles per year we really should be paving about 10 miles per year just to uh, keep our head above water um, the city has never been able to or never chosen to contribute to uh, paving costs so uh, yeah, the mayor uh, would like to uh, make a little bit of a contribution towards paving but with this uh, $200,000, you know, which has never been done before. So we appreciate that. Do you, do you have, um, Commissioner, do you have a list of streets that this $200,000 would, would cover that you, weren't, you wouldn't have been able to do if you didn't get this? Uh, right now we're thinking there's um, one stretch of Bemis Road uh, between the the bridge that goes over the Nashville River and the end of the um, Route 12 project that Mass DOT did uh, a number of years ago. There's a section in between that never got paved, which is kind of rough and has, uh, you know, about 20,000 vehicles per day on it. Uh, we also have a stretch of Marshall Street, um, which actually rain rates a, a minus two on our s scaling system from zero to 100, so it's, uh, it's worse than bad. And... Uh, the other one was um, Pearl Street, <coughs> right right out in front of Hammond Hall at the college, um, between North Street and Highland Ave. So these these items, th these three areas would not have been possible without this, if if this doesn't go through. For That's right. They'd year. have to uh, keep you know, pushing wait, it back. Wait several years, possibly. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Boschman. I know our roads are very, very bad, Mayor, and I appreciate the $200,000. But like you said, that $200,000 for roads don't go far. If you recall, when I first came on the council three years ago, they paid part of Fairmont Street at a cost of over $200,000. Am I right or wrong, Lenny? Right. Um, my gripe is, everybody's going to think I'm crazy, but... The sidewalks are deplorable. Our catch basins are all caving in, and I mean literally caving in, coming in my ward, and I get steel plates over them. I have one that hasn't been touched. I complained about it back in when I first came on in Boxwood Circle. <laughs> it's five inches below the surface of the road. Uh, you get the corner of Clarion Street and Fairmont Street collapse, and now we got a double grate because the hole's getting so big, it's unbelievable. I get the elderly in my neighborhood that can't go out their doors. One, one, and at one in four, at 65 years and older, older fall. They can't walk on the sidewalks. They're deplorable, deplorable. You know, I know the roads are terrible. The catch basins of a collapsing. We had a, one on Main Street just collapsed right next to the Historical Society. We got a bicycle race coming up. We got the parade coming up. It's down. You know, $200,000 to pave a section and say, see, we're paving some of the roads. I would rather see us fix some of the sidewalks so people can walk. I mean, they're deplorable. You can't walk at night. And everybody complains because people walk in the streets, but you can't see where you're walking, and you got holes in the side. Come up to my ward and look at the sidewalks on Clarence Street. For the last four years, I've been asking for sidewalks. Counselor, stick to the street issue, please. The streets and sidewalks. 
This country. This is not about sidewalks. This is about streets. So we're spending $200,000 we can be using on sidewalks and fixing catch basins. You're going on and on about things that have nothing to do with this appropriation. Please stick to the appropriation. Well, Councillor, I don't agree with the 200000 being used for streets. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you. Commissioner, uh, you just mentioned Pearl to Pearl Street to Highland Ave. Is Unitel contributing to that one? Because they just dug it up in the last few weeks. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> It'll depend on what kind of patch they put in. I mean, if they did a permanent patch, they wouldn't owe us. But if they put in a temporary patch, they would contribute to the paving. So I just have to find out um, okay. how that was done. Well, you mentioned Unitel before. And I know they just did it. So I just want to see if it's... Right. Okay. Thank you. President Kushmarek. I uh, commend the, the mayor on putting this uh, this appropriation before us and uh, and Commissioner Laxo for trying to uh, continuously uh, string together our infrastructure system with, you know, bubble gum and, and duct tape. Um, so I know this $200,000 doesn't do, you know, nearly the amount of, um, uh, of road that you'd like it to cover. Uh, but certainly I think these are addressing, you know, um, uh, sorely needed issues. Uh, I also understand that I believe Fitchburg State is going to be doing some sidewalk work throughout the neighborhood um, adjacent to Pearl Street. So to address another councilor's concerns of, you know, we're fixing um, a, a small section of road near one of our biggest engines of economic development um, uh, and outside travel into the city. Um, but they're also then committing to fixing infrastructure, namely sidewalks and lighting in that area. So I think it's a nice trade off. Um, you know, uh, certainly a never-ending list of infrastructure and, and where we can, in years like this, where we can afford to take care of some of these punch list items, um, I, I think we should be moving forward with these. So, uh, Commissioner, thanks again for, for all of your work and your efforts. Thank you. Motion to approve um, 164.17. Motion made and seconded to approve 164.17. Speaking on the motion, I just want to clarify that I asked Councillor Boschman to stick to the topic because Quite frankly, what baffles me is how anybody can have any gripe with this whatsoever. Why do I say that? This is the frustration of being a local elected official. Every single year, every single second of my life as a counselor, that's all I hear, the roads are bad. The roads are bad. No one tells me about the sidewalks, but I'm not disputing the sidewalks are in rough shape. Our entire, infra most of our infrastructure is in rough shape. Take your pick. But the roads are the primary concern. I'd say, arguably, it's the number one issue on every resident's mind, the number one issue. And this is the first year in at least a decade where free cash has been requested to be used to supplement existing state road funding. It's not a lot. It's a pittance. But it's something. And we're trying, as a council, by supporting this, to acknowledge the obvious problem but recognizing the fact that we're not even 50 20 percent of the way there with this one appropriation no one has any illusions this is going to fix things but it's a step it's a positive step one we've never taken before and it's it's a little bit of a lifeline to the residents to say we understand what's going on obviously we drive all these roads especially in ward two and you know I'd say to those who are not happy about this, then petition the mayor or don't vote for this tonight. Have him go spend the 200000 on something else. I can guarantee everybody in this room that if we denied this and it got spent on something else, that's where hellfire will reign. Okay? So legitimate issues, but the topic is road repair because we can go on and on all night about everything else in this city that needs attention from an infrastructure perspective. But the roads are the only thing I ever get complained at about, not the sidewalks, even though the sidewalks are a problem. Motion made and seconded to approve 164.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. 165.17, that there being hereby is appropriated the sum of $90,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to information technology data processing. $25,000 for the purpose of beginning the acquisition of new software for managing the cemeteries, cemetery equipment, departmental equipment, $40,000 for the purpose of acquiring a pickup truck and a lawnmower with attachments and cemetery equipment, colibarium, $25,000 for the purpose of renovation of the mausoleum due to water damage. Mr. Laxo? Mr. Bonilla? I don't know. Okay.
Yeah, there are a few items on here that have been uh, reviewed and approved by the Capital Improvement Commission. Um, one is that um, the cemetery, one of the cemetery vehicles um, broke down beyond repair last year. It's impossible to get it inspected anymore, so we can't drive it on the streets. So um, we're having a hard time getting our staff from uh, one cemetery to the other. You know, we have uh, three full-time people and about six cemeteries, so we, we have to get them uh, from point A to point B, and we just need a vehicle to, to get them in there and, e and equipment there. Um, also, it says uh, columbarium, that really should st state uh, mausoleum. Um, a few years ago, we repaired the mausoleum roof, which had been leaking for many years. Um, there's some water damage inside to the walls and the floor, and uh, you know, $25,000 will go towards um, materials for that work. Um, we're lining up. Monty Tech to do the uh, the actual work, you know, perform the labor. Um, then on software, um, the software that the cemetery is using is um, it must be about 20 years old. Um, it's really not compatible with any other software these days, and um, you know we we have a big database, you know, showing where all the uh, you know where all the graves are located. Uh, people are into genealogy or just to f find where their loved ones are buried and we need to uh, you know, upgrade our software so that we can provide all that information to the public. Uh, so far the cemetery department has um, you know, gotten a couple of uh, demos on different types of software. You know, we still have to do some research and work closely with uh, Trevor on the IT side to, uh, you know, to get the right product. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 16517. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. 16617, that their being hereby is appropriated the sum of $500,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to Department of Public Works Capital Salt Shed for the purpose of replacing the salt shed. Commissioner. Yeah, the salt shed is in really uh, bad condition. The DPW complex was uh, completely renovated about 30, 35 years ago. Uh, everything except the salt shed was done at that time. Uh, so the salt shed is still standing, more or less. Uh, you know, I've been trying to get this replaced for years. Uh, when the mayor was a state rep, we were trying to get state funding to, uh, to take care of it, but we're uh, unsuccessful. Um, and it, it's gone from bad to worse this year because we had some pretty severe windstorms uh, late in the winter, which literally peeled back the uh, the roof on the salt shed like a sardine can. So, um, you know, <clears throat> with rain and snow, the, the product, the salt, um, tends to get ruined. Plus, the walls are uh, rotted away and, and collapsing, so it's it's really hazardous as well. <coughs> Commissioner, how, how old is the shed? Um, and nobody... You know, it goes back before our institutional memory. So uh, I know it's it's much older than 1983. These are actually some questions that some constituents have asked me to ask you. How much how much is the square feet of that shed? How much does that hold, for by way of salt? How, is it? Yeah, I I couldn't tell you the number off the top of my head, but we do have to continuously uh, you know refill it all winter long. So we're getting deliveries. Are we, all winter. Are, because of the condition of the shed, are we experiencing loss of product? Is it affecting the storage of those of that salt? Um, is it costing yeah. us money to have that structure remain the way it is? Yeah, there is salt in there that's uh, been ruined just because it gets rained on or snowed upon. Okay. I would assume for $500,000, this is a pretty big shed. Yeah, it would replace uh, what we have there now. I mean, it's uh, okay. there are cheaper sheds available that are made I've out of... I've seen it. I just... Yeah. For the public's per right. yeah. I mean, there are cheaper sheds out there constructed of uh, fabric instead of wood, but uh, we talked to Mass Duty and they said they tend to tear because of the equipment going in and out of a, a salt shed. And plus, we're in an area that's vulnerable to vandalism and, uh, you know, they like to throw rocks or slice the fabric. And once it's, once it's sliced, it's really hard to repair. Okay. So they, the state's gotten away from fabric sheds. Motion to approve 16617. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 16617. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. 
16717 that there be in hereby is appropriated the sum of $225,000 to be charged against the available funds and credited to Department of Public Works Capital Equipment for the purpose of acquiring a truck. Yeah, this truck would be used for uh, winter operations. Um, it would be outfitted with a plow uh, and a sander. Um, we bought two of these trucks a couple of years ago. Uh, we really need heavy-duty trucks uh, with all of our hills in Fitchburg. You know, they say if you can plow in Fitchburg, you can plow anywhere. Um, we have some trucks that were purchased back in the early 2000s that were light-duty, and ever since they were purchased, they've been a problem because they're continually breaking down, can't make the hills, and uh, they're expensive to maintain because we need new front ends on them every year. Um, so eventually we'd like to replace all of those, and this will be a, a step in that direction. I know some of you had a, have had a chance to ride in the newer plows, and it does uh, make a huge difference, much much more productive. And for the public edification, this thing is gigantic, right? These are the biggest trucks we use. Yes. Mm -hmm. The plow is substantially tall, um, like an industrial size, right? Which is, I had someone ask me $225,000 for a truck. Well, it's not a pickup truck. It's... It's a monster. <laughs> right. And the key is to be uh, heavy duty just so it can make it up and down our hills. President Kushmer. Uh Commissioner Lacks, I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to, to ride along um, uh, a couple of them uh, in, in the new, uh, your newest round. And, you know, even after two years, I'm sure the rigors that have been put on th this equipment, having to back up a street like J Street um, so you can sand it so there's enough traction to get up at a 30 degree angle and then then come down I mean the, the and there's you know there's hundreds of streets like that throughout our city it's uh, it's incredible to see um, the wear and tear that we have to put on our, our equipment on a year-to-year -year basis and I remember a few years ago you're talking about you know we, we couldn't put out enough of our, our of our fleet it wasn't an issue of you know um, getting drivers it was an issue of getting um, reliable equipment out on the street so it could um, it could plow so I think wherever we can do, you know, preventative acquisition uh, before we get to that point, we're just constantly repairing. The better off we are, it's probably a return on investment to buy this than it is to to spend time um, getting um, having mechanics constantly work um, and take uh, take equipment offline. So wholeheartedly <coughs> support this. this. Makes all the sense in the world. Council Donnelly, Commissioner, you think that new truck will be versatile enough to go around the new mini roundabout? <laughs> Thank you. That's a good question. <laughs> well, <laughs> no answer necessary. Motion to approve 167.17. Motion made and seconded to approve 167.17. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. 168.17, an order appropriating the sum of $180,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to the school department capital improvements uh, for the purpose of building a wheelchair lift at Rheingold School for $85,000 and for upgrading the video capability of the Fitchburg High School Auditorium for $95,000. Good evening, Council. Assistant Superintendent Jokola. Good evening. Um, the Rheingold lift uh, needs replacement. It hasn't been in service for about two years. Uh, we've finally retained an architectural firm to assist us with the design and actually it'll, it'll be a little bit different from the the stairway lift that's in place now it'll be more vertical uh, the second item for you to approve as part of the one hundred eighty thousand dollars is the upgrade um, of the video system up at Fitchburg High School's auditorium um, the one that's there actually is still original to the building and actually for our video presentations we're wheeling in a projector and a laptop and uh, we have a lot of problems with that so we'd like to we recommend that investment be made not only for the school but for the community as a resource to have meetings and presentations there Councilor Green the ADA well, we've, we, we've been uh, trying to address it sooner than the two years that it's been out of service, and we've actually had difficulty finding an architect to, to help us out. So we've, we've made, uh, actually one of the issues we had was our principal was uh, on crutches last year, and uh, that impacted her the most. So. Okay, thank you. 
Motion to approve 168. If you wait one second, if Councilor Caddy. So if it's out of service, are there any, is there anybody there in a wheelchair? And if there is, how do we get them out the, of the there, there hasn't been anybody there in a wheelchair. Uh, if there was, we would transport that person to another school to make a temporary accommodation. Motion to approve 168.17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 168.17. Uh, speaking on that, whether we have uh, students or faculty on wheel in wheelchairs currently or not, this is still not ADA compliant, obviously. So this is, would be a necessity regardless. This is a necessity regardless, yeah. correct. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve 168.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. 169.17, in order that their being hereby is transferred from within the sum of $7,000 to be transferred from airport expenses, aviation, fuel, and credit to airport personal services over time. Mr. Ellis. How are you doing, sir? Uh, due to unforeseen uh, uh, illnesses, injuries, and uh, um, weather-related overtime, uh, I exceeded the overtime budget that I asked for last year. And um, I'm looking to move $7,000 from one line item on my budget to uh, <coughs> personal services over time to cover that shortfall. <coughs> Questions? Make a motion to accept 169-17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 169-17. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. 170-17, that there being hereby is of transferred from within the sum of $2,500 to be transferred from election and registration personal services, election workers, and credited to election and registration expenses, office supplies. City Clerk, Anna Farrell. Good evening. Uh, this is just a small request uh, tr transferring within my election budget. Um, we would like to piggyback on a project initiated by the building department. Um, they had a, a, a computer connection installed and we would like to have enough electrical outlets in the warehouse so that we can test our voting equipment and we also install lighting in our vault area. Motion, to, motion approve. to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 170.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you. much. 171.17, in order that the City of Fitchburg approves the expenditure of funds from the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association, MIIA, in the approximate amount of $10,000 for the purpose of said grant. Deputy Commissioner Morosky. Thank you. Um, close to the end of July 2016, we became aware of a grant program that our city's insurer, Maya, has called Risk Management and Loss Control Grants Program. Uh, there were funds available up to $10,000 per single grant amount, and we did submit a grant application, and we were, we were successful on that grant application. Uh, so we are requesting to um, expend those funds that we received from Maya. President Kushmark. Uh, is, is there any uh, additional matching funds that the city will have to put towards this? Not for this program, there isn't. Uh, and they do, they will run this program again, is my understanding, so we should definitely try to take advantage of this. Motion to approve 171.17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 171.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. 172.17, in order that there be in hereby is transferred from within the sum of $25,000 be transferred from DPW highway expenses, gas and oil, and credit to DPW street lights, maintenance, 15,000, and DPW highway personal services overtime, 10,000. Mr. Laxo. Yeah, thank you. We need to make a couple of uh, year-end transfers to uh, make sure we don't run into the red on a couple of our accounts. The first one is uh, street lights, uh, mainly because of street light maintenance costs this past year. Uh, there were five concrete light poles on Boulder Drive that had to be replaced. Uh, FRA was kind enough to uh, donate the, the poles. Uh, DPW did the labor as far as um, you know, getting the new poles up and running. Uh, there were always complications, so there were, there was wiring, underground wiring that had to re be replaced and there was some uh, trenching on the sidewalk that had to be done. Um, so, so that project uh, ate into our maintenance budget. Then also along Main Street, a lot of the uh, decorative light poles uh, 
needed to be repaired or replaced. Uh, so, so we need an extra ten thousand dollars in the streetlight maintenance maintenance account. Um, then on the highway overtime account, um, we have the Longstreet Classic coming the last week of the fiscal year, so uh, that would uh, put us in the red unless we, um, you know, add ten thousand dollars to uh, to that account. Uh, this will all come from the gas and oil account. Um, gas prices were low again this year, uh, so we have a surplus in that account to uh, cover those two accounts. So the street light maintenance, that's not your normal LED light that we installed. That's mostly repairs of non, non regular street lights, if you will, and, and, and Boulder Drive and Main Street mostly. It's not, because when I saw this, my first thought was, what are we doing repairing those brand new LED lights that we already procured? They should last us a long time. So. If that's not what that's going to. No. It okay. was, uh, yeah, the decorative lights and okay. the old concrete light poles. Thank you. Motion to approve 172.17. Council, I have Amy. Uh, Council Green. Of course. Uh, Council. I just have a question. Has um, Longzhou ever been billed for the overtime that DPW provides for that event? No, I don't think so. Is that because we're kind and we just do it, or because nobody's ever billed Longzhou for it? Yeah, I mean, as, as long as I've been here, we've always just um, paid for it out of our overtime account. Okay, thank you. So, Donald, just in response to that, I mean, I, I appreciate the question, but I think maybe we should use some of our marketing money to promote the long jump. Get $900,000 from the hotel for room tax. I mean, these are things that put the good good sign of Fitchburg up on the, on the board as opposed to bad publicity. If, if you want to try and balance it, but $900,000 in room tax from the water park, that, I think that's the kind of money we should be using to promote the Long Joe and anything else that's good for Fitchburg. Thank you. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 172-17. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. 17317, authorizing the city of Fitchburg to accept a donation of funds in the amount of $50,000 from Ralph Baker of 840 Ashby West Road, pursuant to an memorandum of understanding, providing for the management of city property for drinking water. And I think the petition is the same. Thank you. Good evening, councilors. Um, with me is Janet Morrison and uh, Ralph okay. Baker. Um, I'll let Janet um, speak to this uh, item. Hi, I'm Janet Morrison. I represent Ralph Baker in this matter. Um, this is, as uh, I understand, a little bit unusual. Uh, this is uh, based on an agreement. Uh, there will be a donation to the city in the amount of $50,000 based on an agreement by the city to uh, hold uh, a certain amount of the watershed lands, approximately 200 plus acres, as a forest reserve and not cut it uh, for a period of 30 years. So um, that is the um, basis of, of the donation. There is a memorandum of agreement that's been reviewed by the city solicitor relative to that. I'm not sure what's in your packet, but uh, there's a map of the property which is accompanies the memorandum which would be recorded uh, and um, there's also uh, obviously a legal description and uh, in addition there's a reasoning uh, attached for keeping the property uh, uh, uncut um, among other reasons um, there are some um, environmental values ecological values to old growth for forests and I think that um, uh, Mr. Baker himself wants to address the issue of uh, carbon capture and how an uncut forest can actually provide an economic benefit to the city in some, uh, in some cases, perhaps in the future. But for this particular donation, the agreement is to not cut uh, the particular forest land for a period of 30 years. Did you want to add anything to that, John? Um, no. it's a it's a piece of land that we would have uh, logged, you know, either this year or next year, and 
the amount of the donation exceeds the amount of revenue we would have gotten from the gotten from the logging. So it's actually a, a positive for the city as far as or the water division for revenues. Um, we log in the watersheds to to hopefully improve the lands, but also to generate revenue to pay taxes um, in other communities um, where we uh, own property. So um, in exchange for the fifty thousand, we wouldn't do any forestry on that piece of property um, that is on Ashby West. If there were an issue with the with the land, say there was a fire, um, some type of infestation from a bug or something like that, um, or a die off of trees, we would be allowed to go in there and to remove those. Um, you know, so there are no adverse uh, effects to the stands. Of, uh, but um, otherwise, it would remain untouched. Is this is this fifty thousand just straight new revenue into the water department? Is that pretty much all this is? For the most, because you just said that you would have gotten it from logging. This exceeds that, so this is. Yeah, and this goes right into your general right. fund instead of, revenues. Instead of cutting the trees, um, yep. we would have, uh, you know, instead of getting that revenue, we'll get this. Uh, Do you have any idea how much above what we would have gotten? Um, the fifty compared to what? What would have? What would have the logging have been? Probably been forty to forty-five thousand over okay. the course. We would have cut it once, and then maybe once more toward the end of that thirty-year span. Okay. So. President Kushmer. Uh, first, I want to thank. Uh, Mr. Baker, thank you for uh, not only you know um, uh, looking to protect the land, uh, future generations, but also looking at the environmental effects and, and what this does for our city and our community, um, and for your generosity in doing so. You know, I think, um, it's always I, a if I may, when you're please. done, elaborate a little bit on the the rationale. If you would, uh, okay. m Mr. Chair, yes. you're uh, amenable. Yep. You, yeah, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, uh, additional understanding of what the rationale is. Under conventional forest management practices, it is customary to um, do these cuts from time to time in different parcels of the city's roughly 4,000 acres of uh, water protection land. Um, I felt that given the importance of carbon sequestration on helping to mitigate climate change, which is not something that conventional foresters think about very much, at least not yet, that it would be uh, a very important first step to say, okay, let's take a block of land and not cut it, keep that carbon in place, not produce emissions that are unnecessary, and basically compensate the city for the lost income that they'll experience because of not getting the the income from the logging. But um, beyond that, I'd like to emphasize that as I have uh, introduced to John and the Commission, there are opportunities for the city to look at this, these 4,000 acres as a, uh, an asset in which uh, we might be able to market the carbon uh, on the open market and get additional revenues that the city isn't enjoying right now. Other municipalities in the state are doing that, such as Springfield, um, some up, up in Essex County, I understand, and uh, I'm not prepared to give you a lot of information about that today, but it behooves us to see what we can do to maximize, in other ways, the benefits economically to the city as well as environmentally. Well, sorry, I, you know, it's one thing to you know, ask the city to be environmentally conscious. Uh, it's another to put your money where your mouth is, too, and, and provide an incentive to the city to, to do exactly that and think long-term about future generations and the city's um, best interests. Um, it's something we're always thinking about and trying to weigh, you know, um, often environmental impact versus potential revenue um, or economic development. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate you, you stepping forward and uh, you making such a, uh, such a generous gift to the city. You're welcome. Council Caddy. Well, that's really nice to work with us. Thank you. Thank you. Are you planning on earmarking the money for anything special other than just to pull it in the general fund? No, no it's, it's being provided to the Water Department for their needs. Don, is that something? It seems to be such a generous donation for ecology, isn't it? Wouldn't it be nice to put that in account so if you need it in the future? With something related instead of just throwing it into the the general water department's account to spend on um we could do that i hadn't given any thought i was just looking to replace the, the forestry revenue so we could pay our taxes so 
uh, trying to balance out our, the logging with that. So okay. Uh, so is there any other land out of the 4,000 acres that we don't cut, or is this the first? This will be piece? the first trial. Is, is this something that other communities have been pursuing? I mean, I've looked into it a little bit. It isn't very um, popular right now. It really depends on you know what's available for for monies out there from the government. Right now, there you know there isn't right now. So, but a couple of communities, as Ralph said, have have uh, done it. But. Well, I would um, if you need to take some of the money to pay for taxes, it would be nice to take a percentage of the money to, and put it for what I'm trying to explain. I'm probably not doing a very good job with it, but it just seems to me that it, it's, uh, with someone being so generous in, in having a cause, it seems to me that a portion of that money should go towards what they're trying to do. Thank you. Motion to approve. Uh, approve 173 and 182 17. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to approve 173 17 and 182 17, which is a petition that uh, basically is in relation to 173 17. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.